All right, guys. Good afternoon. Hey, my name is Joe Barnett. I'm with Century 21 Lighthouse Realty here in Jacksonville, Florida as the Director of Recruiting. Uh, we've got several of our agents on the call here, and as they continue to come in, I'll let them in and admit them individually. Uh, we've also got Jeff Burgess, our broker and our principal on the phone, uh, Cindy Pride, our growth consultant, Colin McGovern with corporate. We've got uh, uh, Marilyn as well, so we've got a whole host of corporate folks here. Uh, today, we're going to talk about Moxie and uh, one of the four components as we uh, introduce this and launch this for our agents. We've got two of the best subject matter experts in Moxie, from my understanding, on the planet on this call. So we're excited to get you guys going. So uh, I think Marilyn, I guess, is the primary for you. I'll go ahead and turn it over to you for your meeting. Uh, whatever you like to do, share screen, anything like that. Um, I do realize uh, that not every agent's on this call. If you have anything, well, we got the recording, but if you have anything else you want me to share with them, flyers, handouts, FAQs, Q&A, anything like that after the call, if you email me something, I'll be more than happy to get out to those agents who weren't able to participate on the call. All right, perfect. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So there's been some changes to 21 online. If you've logged in today, um, there is a multi-factor authentication process. So um, it just takes a couple seconds. I was walking through someone with it this morning. It's just to add an additional layer of security for you and it makes it easier for you to change your password. Um, but with that being said, we, um, I don't have access to a lot of what you have, and I'm um, not having agent or broker access. I'm going to show you a couple of things, and then I'm going to go into a training environment, which is live. But um, so how you get to Moxie, when you get into 21 online, you'll go to the, the uh, hamburger menu in the top right corner, and you go down to productivity hub. If you're not familiar with this, this should be your best friend. This is how I get around 21 online all the time. It uh, makes it really easy. It is the most popular tools that we have and they're alphabetized. So you'll go down to Moxie. Um, the cool thing about this is you have all of the Moxie tools and you can click on the learn more. You'll go, let's say you click on Moxie engage. It will get you to a landing page and give you some information about engage. Then you have one more click to access the dashboard and it takes you to one single Moxie dashboard with all the tools there. So hamburger menu, productivity hub, and then choose one of the Moxie products, click on learn more and then click on um, to go to that program. Now, with that being said, I am going to go into, um, let's see. My, excuse me just a second. Let's see, I've got a lot of things open here. Um, Moxie present. Here we go. So it looks a little bit different than yours, um, but pretty much and you'll have your brokerage logo information and you'll have, um, you, you see you've got present, engage, website, and press. Promote is an additional tool that you can pay for, but that's to help promote your listings. We aren't going to be talking about that, but if you wanted more information, you could get that. So this is an, a learning environment. So these are mostly sample presentations that we have built. But what I want to do is I'm going to create a new one. So you may have, you, you won't see any presentations here. Um, if there are any presentations that your brokerage, um, Jeff, this might fall on your shoulders. But if there's any presentations that they have created for you, you can go under the brokerage presentation tab. Um, so all you have to do is click on create new. And then it asks you what type you want. So obviously this, um, a lot of people, the number one user um, or use for presentations is for listings and for sellers. So that's going to be primarily what you're going to use. But there's some additional ones here too. There's a property review in case you wanted to do that. And, and it's similar to a seller presentation. Then there's a buyer's tour. Um, the buyer's tour is really cool because you can create that, especially if you wanted to... Um, give out some open houses and let your buyers know, hey, listen, here's a list of five or six houses that are going to be open this Saturday and Sunday. Um, I've created a pathway for you and given you all the information. So you can give that to them or you can create that for your showing list. Uh, you can also, there's a, another buyer presentation and then there's a non-listing presentation. So there's multiple uses here for you. But what we're going to start with first is we're going to talk about seller. And I'm going to create a new one so you can see how easy it is. Um, there are multiple templates. 
So, and you can name them. Um, of course, we have been in here. There's been two or three people that have been into this platform. Uh, we've got one that says my fave. There's only three pages. Here's one that just has one page. And then there's a test that has 13. I'm going to go ahead and go with the default just so you can kind of see what that looks like. And I'm going to hit continue. So I am going to create, create this for Joe. And I'm going to do luxury because Joe, I know that you're a luxury kind of guy. Now this is a connected to an MLS in Texas. It's, it's in Temple, Texas, Central Texas, midway between Austin and Dallas and um, relatively small community, but, but not too tiny. So if you have an MLS ID, let's say this is maybe you're, you've got a, um, an expired or withdrawn and you had an MLS ID, you can type that in there. Otherwise you can, and it will auto populate, makes it so simple. Otherwise, if this is a brand new listing that hasn't been on the market in forever, then you would just type in all of the information that's relevant. But what I'm gonna do for the sake of time is, I've already got it loaded. This is the MLS number right here. And it's, you see how quickly it auto populates. So it's got an image over here. This is the, the, the front view. If you want to change it, you can certainly change it. You can browse and, and replace it with an image that's yours. I would not recommend using someone else's image. I'm doing this only for training exercises. So um, this is the image out of the MLS and that it would not be something that I would give out to anyone. So make sure that you get something your own or you come up with some other kind of image. All the locational information is here, even the map to show where it is. If you wanted to um, you know, zoom in or, or move out, you can see where it, where it lies within the community because it's pretty, it's pretty close in. Um, it's like, well, I need to kind of figure out where is that in the Temple Market? Well, oh yeah, now I know because I recognize some of these other, these other streets. And then it auto populates all the property information that, that is fed from the MLS, makes it really easy. So if you're doing it like, again, like with a property that has not been listed, you would have you know, to fill this information out, give as much as you can of what you feel is necessary to, to make that listening presentation. And then you can type in remarks um, if that's something that you want to do for your listing for the seller. But a lot of times that's something that's done after the fact when it goes into the MLS. But we give you that option to put it in here. It also gives you the character, um, maximum character limit that you can use in, in this um, remarks section. Just like pretty much any other uh, platform, just click on continue. So this is the address and this, this is the listing. This is our subject property right here. So this is all of the comps that have, that have popped up, whether they're sold, they're active or they're pending. So all you have to do is just go through. You can filter if you want by price. If you say, hey, I think I need to filter this by price or by beds and bath count, then you can do that. I'm not gonna put any filters on it. I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick, um, Let's see, this one's about the same size. This one's about the same size. It's a little bit smaller. We like to bracket, even if it is with listings or um, pendings. Um, this one's a tad bit smaller. And if I could find one, here's one that's bigger. And here's another sold one. Um, so these are ones that I found. Let's go with one more sold right there. So I've picked them out. And this on the, on the right-hand side is the map. If you wanted to do something, uh, maybe expand, you can filter by schools. You can freehand draw where you want to choose those competitive properties from. So if you wanted to expand the market and go farther, or if you wanted to be more limiting, I know that y'all are in a really um, concentrated market. So you may really want to zoom in and freehand draw um, so that you get, get um you know, some, some really good competitive listings and sold properties that are close in proximity to your property. And then we hit continue. Now it's going to come up with the display order of how I, I click them on. So what I want to do is on the display order, it, it's going to, it's got two actives, one pending and two solds. This may not be enough data for me to really do a good 
uh, listing presentation. I might want to do some more solds, depending upon what your personal preference is and how you um, have been performing your CMAs and your listing presentations in the past. You might want to go back and say, wait a minute, I thought I clicked on enough. Maybe I need to go in and get another one or two that have sold. And if I can find maybe another listing and another pending. So I have a really good um, representation of what's going on in this market or in this particular neighborhood. But, but for our purposes today, I'm going to keep it this way. But there is a pencil in the display order and you can reorganize that. So right now it's got the one, it's got the active and then the pendings and then the solds. I really want the solds to be first. So it's just a drag and drop. Then I want to be able to show the sellers what is actively on the market? What competition are you going to be, um, you know, in you know, having when you when we do list the property, and then the pending. And I'm not sure about every single market, but the markets I'm familiar with, the pending data is very limited. the The potential contract price in most markets that I'm familiar with are not disclosed, so it's just kind of there for support. You can look at the listing price. You may or may not have any indication of what that eventual the eventual closing price is going to be. So I'm going to put that at the end and then I'm going to click save and it's going to reorder. What I really like is over on the left or the right side here, it has all of the summary. It gives um, all of the properties, the low, the average, and then the high when it comes to the sold homes, the listings, the active listings, and then the pending listings as well. And then it breaks it down by uh, bedroom count and bath count, square footage, price, and then the price per square foot. So you can see if maybe what that home, especially if this is one that had been withdrawn, and it was listed for, in this particular case, it is listed for 635. My first opinion was, I think that's a little bit high. So, hey, listen, it's at 229 a foot. Um, there's nothing else even close. There's one at 222, but it's, and it's a little bit bigger. But other than that, they really go a whole lot lower than that. So, Maybe that's why this home hasn't sold. Maybe that's why they took it off the market. So I am very well prepared when I go into that listing appointment to have that fierce conversation with the seller saying, listen, I know you marketed it for this price, but the market data today indicates that it's going to be maybe considerably lower than what you had listed it for two months ago, six months ago, whatever the case may be. But being able to look at each of these um, these metrics and say, hey, how does it look like it's in line? The price per square foot with when I'm comparing it to other homes that are the same size, what how they're listed, um, does it is it telling me a story? So I love having that there. Um, so anyway, we go all the way down. It shows the um, all of the transactions. You can add more listings if you want. Like I said, if it's like, hey, I think I need to add another one or two, then you just click on the add more listings right here. Then we're going to click continue. So um, it automatically, I mean, how quick was that? It's telling me based on the average sales, the listing price for this property should be 435,000. That's 200,000 below what it was listed for. Um, that's a lot. So there may be a little bit more massaging I need to do. Do I need to go back and add some more listings? Let, let me see if there's anything, maybe expand. Maybe there's something really, really unique about this property that would, would justify having it be at the, the upper end of, of the um, price range. But um, that's just what it shows right here. You can also create a range. So it's like, yeah, I'm going to go from 435 and I'll go all the way up to 475. I think maybe um, that we can get, you know, list it somewhere in this range. And then we can talk about that when we have our listing, you know, listing appointment. Say, so listen, the market data shows that there's a range between this and this. Um, what are you thinking? And let's see what we can do. Um, let me let me go ahead and look at the amenities, all the features that you have, and and it might be a reason for me to cause to change this range. Um, but as far as everything goes right now, this is what is um, the market is indicating. And again, it gives that same information that we had seen before. So you've got a rate, you've got the range, or you can do it just as a singular price. There's also a choice for you to have net proceeds. So if you know that they have um, the, the home is free and clear, um, we can go in here and say, listen, if we sell it for 475,000 and there is no mortgage, 
um, I know that my fee is 5% and I'm going to co-op with someone and give them three. And um, the property taxes on this probably are about $12,000. Title insurance in Texas is probably running about 4,500. And if I know some of these other prices that the title company or charges that will happen at closing, you can put those in. And then we can have a net proceeds sheet for them. You can also do two or three, a high, an average, and a low um, based on anywhere in that range. So you can have these created. I would recommend that if you do that, that you make sure that any of the title fees are uh, the closing fees that are going to be charged, that you that they're fairly accurate. Um, there's some that, that we can kind of know right off the bat. And in every state is different. Every market's different. But there's others that you may not know. So, But it gives you that option. So it's right in here. I'm going to go ahead and click Save. And then I'm going to Continue. So now on the left-hand side is all the pages that we have. I can edit there. I see the pencil. I can go in and edit the cover page. Um, there's a property summary, the listing overview. So any of these pages, I can go in there and edit whenever I see the pencil. Gives you the option to have two different views. You can do a web view or you can do a print view. I like the web view and uh, we'll just look at it really quick. So I'm gonna do web. And what's cool about this, it is interactive. So it just takes a couple of seconds to build your presentation. And then it, you just scroll down and you, you look at all of the photos, you look at all the amenities. But what I really like is as you get down in the pages, when it starts you looking at some of the comparable data, um, it gives you some graphs and you can, it's interactive. So you could click on those graphs to see exactly which property it is giving you the metrics on, what the details on, and um, so you kind of know. There's a map. Now this is a side-by-side -side, um, comparison. So it has each of the properties, a subject property, and then each of um, each of the, the properties, and then it has in column format, how, what their list price was, what their sales price, and so on, and the closing date, days on market. And there's more photos and then this, and I'm sorry, that was the, the, the row, this is the column, this is a side by side. So it's easy to see um, these is active, the sold, the pending. Let's get down to the maps. Now there's a lot of pages here. So when you see this, you can go in and you can remove some of these pages um, and then you can save it. If you saw when we first got in here, that was my faves. So you can save a template that is that has all the pages that you really like. And you can also add pages. So I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. Um, the average pricing was 506. This is all the average details. Now this is where it shows the chart. So what it only does is chart the, on this one, the sold and the pendings. So when I click on, I just hover over number four and then number three, it tells me which property it was, the sales price, the days on market, and all of these, it shows, even though they're not, um, they're not the trend line is not showing these others. These are the the um, the actives, but you can see it's showing a lot of different um, trends. Now this um, this can be a good indication of what's going down. That maybe the market is softening here. So maybe that's why, if it had, if this was a withdrawn listing that um, the reason why it might be indicated a, a much lower price than what had been done a couple of months, months ago when it was really listed. So we can, there's many, many pages there. There's the net proceeds that's at the very end. So um, because that, that shows the cost of 54.5, so the net at, with, at this particular price would be 420,500. Really neat to be able to see all that in that, that um, web-based, presentation. So it's like, yeah, I just don't know that I want all of these pages, but I want to add a page. So I'm in this built presentation already. So you can click on add a page and you can go from the library or you can create your own new one. To create a new one, it's you can build or you can upload one. So let's say that you live in Temple, Texas, and you have a page already built that says life in Temple. And you have some information, you've got some photos, maybe some photos of, um, you know, the local 
um, if there's a, a college there, high schools, the city, city hall, anything that would be really exciting for a buyer to see, especially if they're coming from outside the market, you've created that page already, then you can upload it or you can build your own. And when you build your own, it gives you five different options for templates. The first one is just a blank page. This one has three sections. This one has four. And then they add sections um, each time. All you have to do is click on create and it gives you this option. If you wanted to create it in the print or the portrait um, mode, it tells you, it gives you a hint to do it web-based first and then copy it from that or build it from scratch, uh, upload from a PDF. So either way that would, it, that gives you that little hint, but you can have this top bar be a text. You can create an image, a video, and then you can have something more if you just wanted to type in or create maybe some links or something like that. It gives you word processing so that you can create the right font that you want. Um, let's say it even has YouTube links. You can embed a new YouTube video, an image here. So this allows you to, to pretty much do anything you want in this header, this header line. So let's just say, um, Life in temple, whoops, in temple. And I need that bigger. I wanna do extra large text. I wanna bold it and then I want to center it. And then I wanna come in and I wanna put an image here um, and maybe a video here. And that would be an additional page. Um, or this, this, of course, is for a seller presentation, so you might do something different, but you get, uh, hopefully you get the idea. It's like, yeah, this is, um, that you might say, listen, this is a listing presentation, but I am going to include this in my marketing. I'm going to show all the buyers out there, the potential buyers, those that may be out of our market, what life in this market is like, and really try to draw in as many buyers' eyes as I can. So you, that could be part of your value proposition, showing the the seller exactly how you're going to help increase um, the um, engagement and, and the uh, activity to, the, to their property. So we can hit save and let's just say life. There we go. All right, so that's how you can add a separate page. So, and it shows up right here. If I wanna drag and drop, I wanna put it down here. That's where I want it. I can definitely come into any of these pages and I can hit remove. Um, let's say that I don't want that net proceeds sheet for some reason, so I just remove it. Um, price and size, any of these sheets, if you think that they're in the pages that you think might be too much, then you can remove them here. You can go in there and edit. So you can um, look at the content and add different content, um, create, create some additional to, to add to it, or just kind of reword if you like. So, um, and then we've got the presentation and we can send it straight from here. So you click on the email button if, you, if this is something you wanna do, or if you wanna send it to Jeff or Joe and say, hey, what do you think about this? Get their opinion and they can look at it and they can give you some constructive feedback and say, okay, I think this is too many pages or what about adding a page about this? So um, really is easy. You don't have to worry about downloading and then go into a separate um, system and sending it. You can send it straight from here. The settings button, um, this is, you can, you can have to display header on the photos or not. And then you can choose. I had chosen earlier the luxury design. Maybe I decide, hey, I think I want to go ahead and make it just the, the classic or the traditional. So you can change it here if you want to change the design. Um, so that's in the settings. And then there's more. So you can create a quick flyer. You can assign it to an agent. Or if you have or if you've got a co-lister or you're on a team and you want to send it to them or add them so that they can edit this, then you can do that here. You can delete it and then you can also ask for help or feedback. So that's all up here in the right corner. So um, I'm gonna go back to home and now I should have Joe Barnett's seller presentation for Deerfield Drive. So it is here. Now there are other presentations. So um, you can create new again. I wanna show you the buyer's tour.
Now there are a few different templates here, just like before. This one is 31 pages. I don't think I wanna do that many. I'm gonna go ahead and do the default. But when you're when you first logging in here, you might want to look and open up each of the templates just to kind of see what's there. And you can create your own. So whether you want to create your own or use one or take one, change it and then save it as your own. So you're not creating from scratch. That way it makes it twice as fast when you come back. So I'm going to go ahead and go with the default buyer tour. And again, I'm going to go ahead and make this for Joe. And this time we're gonna do the classic. It takes just a couple seconds to, to create. So um, if you have an image to upload here, then you can upload an image. Now I think this is for, um, you know, for Joe as a buyer, maybe I'm creating an open house. So maybe I just wanna have an open house sign or something that's very generic here because it is not property specific. Um, or it could be that he's a buyer in Dallas, Texas. So I could maybe do a, a, some, some image that I have in my data bank uh, or my photo library of Dallas or something that reminds me of Dallas. You could put that in there. And so now we are um, going to add a zip code or a city. And again, I'm going to go ahead and put Temple because that is connected to this MLS. And it's going to show me all the listings that are in Temple, only the active listings. So you can see there's um, probably a little close to a thousand listings. If I wanted to freehand and maybe go outside of the temple market as long as um, I've got the MLS goes in that area and it's not just the city of temple. A lot of times there's MLSs that, that cover multiple cities, but because I put temple only, um, I, I might could capture some additional listings by freehanding and drawing outside of the city. But okay, let's see, I see this Sleepy Hollow. That one, I, th I think you probably can afford a million dollar. And here's one, and then here's one. So he's told me what he wants, to, what he's looking for. So several of these look like they might um, meet his criteria. So again, I've clicked on, I don't see any others here. So I want to use those. And let me see, I've got to get down and hit continue. And then it's going to give me a logical order for us to tour, or if these were open houses, what, what order would, would make best to drive the drive time. And you can see I've got number one here, and then number seven is really close to it. So I'm starting and ending at the same place. Well, that doesn't make sense. I think I wanna see number seven, and I want to um, reorder it. So I wanna change the order. So I'm gonna go down to number seven and I want it to be down up at the top with, let's see, number two, there we go. So, um, and now, now it's one, two, and then I go all the way to three and then do four. And I think I want number seven to be number six, let's see. There we go, that makes a little bit more sense. So you see how you can drag and drop and make sure that you get the best um, you know, drive time available. I'm gonna save the order. If I wanted to add more listings, I could do it from here. Maybe there are some listings, maybe there's some builder deals that are not in the, um, in the MLS. I could add a custom listing here as well. And again, we're gonna go to continue. And this is the presentation. This is what it looks like. Here are the pages on the left-hand side. And here's where, if, I, if this is what I really, really like, I can save it as a template. So um, again, let's go up, let's see. I'm gonna view as a web page because I really do like that. Just takes just a few seconds to get that built. So this is my buyer's tour and it will have, um, this is Andy's picture and the map, so this is really great, and the photos. So when you send this electronically, it's like, wow, 
Um, I see all these photos. Some may stand out to be, oh, I just fell out, fall in love with that. Others might be, ah, oh, that's not quite. So your buyer could say, you know, I'm, I'm not sure that I want to look at num listing number four or number three. So, um, and then it also shows some, whoops, some of the major points of interest in the map. If you didn't notice that, let's see, come up a little bit. Um, there's a VA hospital and there's a, the medical center here. And then it shows a lot of parks and different recreation areas. So it not only shows just the city and the location of the listings, it shows the proximity they are to some other, some of other, those other points of interest. So I really like this too, um, to be able to get a good view of the whole market and, and looking at these, um, these listings. So this is just of some, um, some icons or some little tags that you can see um, a little bit of the information. You can add a review. So if you have this on your phone, your buyers have this on the, their phone, they can go in and they can add a review. They can say, oh, I didn't like the dormers on this house, but I love the covered porch. I'm not sure about um, the garage in the front. I'm gonna give it a three star. Uh, so they can actually make their comments when they're going through, especially, whether it be open houses or with you as a listing agent, um, that so they don't they don't get them all confused, especially if you're looking at more than one or two in a day or looking at more than one or two period. Over time, they all start to run together. So it's it's a good way for those buyers to be able to refresh their memory. What was that house like? I'm trying to remember if I really liked it or not. Um, and then it goes again in the side-by-side -side comparison. So you can kind of really look to say, okay, let me compare it to bedrooms and baths and square footage and a lot of the, the different metrics. And it, it gives a lot of information here, even, even the school district. So that can be a big deal. And then the averages, again, like we saw earlier with, with the pricing, the high, the low, the median, the average. And then more information here in the row format. So this might be a comparison. It's like, okay, this is overkill. I might not want to do this page. So you would remove this page because you like that side by side because it really kind of, in my mind, I like the side by side. That's how my brain works. So I would remove this page, but um, it could be very beneficial. And then again, it has the graphs. So you can highlight over each of the points. These are all active. So they are not, there is no trend line because they haven't closed yet. And again here, and at the very end, it's your contact information. Hopefully you've got a photo added here, all the contact information here. And, um, and that is the buyer presentation. So I'm gonna go back home. And I want to show you just a couple of things. Um, if you go to my library, so you can add folders and you can create pages. Depending upon how many pages you want to create, you might want to think about doing a folder. It's kind of like having a file, um, a filing cabinet. So if you just had a bunch of papers in the filing cabinet and you're trying to find something, you would be thumbing through all day long. But if you have folders and you have them labeled buyers, sellers, um, you know, maybe different, different neighborhoods and you've got different pages you've created for each neighborhood, then you might want to have a folder for each of those neighborhoods. Then you can go in and create a page and, and put it into that folder. So it's easily found when you do need it at a later date. So my esteemed colleague, Colin, has gone in and, and created a folder and I created a folder. All you have to do is click on new folder, give it a name, and I'm just gonna give this a test. Um, you don't have to give it a description if you don't want to, and I'm going to hit save. So now we've got the test folder. So when I create a page, and if I build it, whether I upload it from a PDF or if I build the page, I like this design. I'm going to create. I'm going to give it some text and I'm just going to say test. And then I'm going to save it. And right here, this is really important, especially if um, you're creating something that maybe you want to share with uh, one of your um, coworkers, or if you're doing it on behalf of um, admin or staff, there's a sharing option. So you can enable page editing here. So if someone else is going to use this page, 
I want them to be able to edit or I don't. So if you want to lock it, you want it to be only yours. As long as you don't share it, then no one else will have it. It will live in your Moxie Present platform. But um, if it's something that is being done that you're going to share, like we I showed you earlier, where you could send it to um, a co-lister or send it to someone else and you wanted them to be able to make edits, this is where you would mark that. And you can save it to my pages or I can save it into the test folder. So I want it to go straight there. So um, I'm choosing the test folder. I'm going to say this is a test two and I'm going to save. So now when I want to add a page, then I know that I've created a page for that for um, the neighborhood called test, test two. I go to the neighborhood, the folder called test and it's there. So, all right, now going back, if you go back to the logo in the top left corner, it gets you to the main page, your main dashboard. And we can go to my library just to verify that everything's done. There's a test folder and oh my goodness that um, I did not get it into. So I'm, I must have missed a save button. So that test two page, I need to open that up and then go back in and save it into the test folder. So, um, but right now it's in, it, it still is in my pages section. So I would be able to find it, but as, as I start adding pages, I wanna make sure that I put them in the right folder. Um, but if you're just adding a few pages, that's fine. And if you label them so that they're easy to find, that would be great. If you add, label them as cities or zip codes or uh, neighborhood, something like that, then it's really easy for you to retrieve. So the main, the main thing here is that the Moxie tools, all four that we're going to be talking about, they're all connected to your MLS. Um, if there is something that is not on the MLS, you can certainly add it no matter what we're talking about, but it would be a manual entry, but it takes the work off of your shoulder. If um, there is not a listing or there is no data in the MLS, you would not be able to transport and download that, that information like I did when I was doing that Deerfield drive, you would have to manually enter it. But other than that, it just takes a couple of minutes, then you choose the listings that you want, you choose the, the solds or the pendings, and then it creates a very professional plat, um, listing presentation for you use or buyer presentation. And then there's other ones, we just didn't have all the time to go into all of them. There's um, you know, additional buyer, another buyer, there's a buyer's tour and there's one for a buyer. And there's just one that's for non-listings, just a presentation. If you wanted to create um, some content for one of your listings, you can do it there. So there are um, multiple uses and multiple opportunities for you to be able to use this tool very easily and conveniently and, um, and be professional at the same time. So Colin, I'm going to ask you, because I know I, I, I talked a lot, we're, we're getting close to time, but Colin, is there anything that you'd like to add um, that, that maybe I overlooked or talked too fast over? <laughs> I thought it was all uh, excellent. The one thing I want to, that out of all the things with Moxie, it, it also got me really cranked up about it because the web version is dynamic, meaning that as you have a presentation you share with the client um, electronically, that if there's a property that was in your pick list of the, the properties that you're doing as a comp, it will actually update it. So if it's an active and it goes pending or sold, that presentation will update automatically without you having to do it. So that's a really, I think that's a really cool feature. Uh, the other thing I want to share, Marilyn, and um, Joe, I don't know if you can give me screen sharing privileges. I want to share my screen real quick. I've got something dialed up here. Oh, you, you should already be able to share your screen, sir. I, I got it. Okay. So um, extra training. This is where I learned a lot of things of, of, about Moxie myself. So in the learning library in Century 20 University, if you just type in Moxie, so learning library search, just type in Moxie. And then, well, you can see, I don't know how to type today. But when you type in Moxie, that will give you all the occurrences of Moxie training. 
And so you'll see here, it says Moxie present as our, our training today, but the other things that we'll be talking about this week. And then when you pop into here, there's on-demand uh, video in here with Moxie. So it's, um, this is a broker part, but anyway, there's great Moxie training in here for you as well. So that was it. Thank you, Joe. I, I have a question. Hey. Is it all right? Can I ask a question? You sure can. Okay. Um, in Toolkit CMA, they pro they provided a bunch of pre-formatted pages that had a lot of information on it. Some of it was better than others, but I did use some of that. Uh, and is that information ever going to be populated here? Or what do we do for information about Century 21 or generic marketing information that I include in my listing presentation that's not currently what you just presented? So you have the ability to create your own pages. Um, Colin, um, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not sure if any of that collateral that was in Toolkit is proprietary to them. Uh, and that might be why it's not here. Colin, do you know? I don't, but we can ask the marketing team. Yeah. Uh, I do know, Joe, that, um, or Jeff, I mean, I do know that we are adding content to us, uh, like in, to the campaigns and engage. Our marketing team is taking um, our CRM system that we have and everything that we're using that we're, we're transferring over to Moxie and they're having to recreate. So every day, every week that you log in, you'll see more content. But we'll definitely ask if any of those um, standard pages will ever be there. Um, that's why, you know, if you, if you can create and you can create it on a brokerage level and you can share it with all of the agents. So if there is a page that you really like that talks about um, Century 21 Lighthouse that you want everyone to have access to, then you can, you can save it on the company level, then everyone would have it in their, in their library when they go to create a presentation. So, um, yeah. Uh, a lot of the, a lot of the things that I used were like, uh, you know, our web presence, your unique property site, um, uh, valuation, all that kind of stuff. So, Joe, what's up? Uh, no, twenty one step marketing plan. Oh yeah, okay. okay. Yeah. I was wondering what that was. <laughs> do one. Do one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's, a, you know, and I know that you can, you, I, we can go back and create those things. But one of the things that I want to eventually get to, and, and I don't want to be the guy that has to sit and create all this stuff for my agents because I'm not that good at it. <laughs> who knows? Who knows what they might end up with if I'm doing it? <laughs> okay. I, like, I want the top-notch, slick, uh, state-of-the-art stuff that um, that that you guys can come up with in presentation form, so that so that my agents can add those pages. So, Because right now I can do a listing presentation with the CMA, with all the listing documents and everything in under 30 minutes mm -hmm. yeah. and have it in my folder ready to go. Uh, and I want my agents to be able to do that as well. I don't want my, I do, a, I spend a ton of money in my office so that my agents don't have to write content. Right. Because the, writing content to me, writing a blog, writing all that kind of stuff is kind of a waste of time for my agents when they can buy one and I buy it for them. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, a lot of that content that you're talking about, we do have it in PDF form and, and we have it in resource areas. So when, when I created a, a, a page from scratch, you could upload a PDF. So uh, we have a lot of that. When you're talking about the maybe the seller's pledge, you're talking about our web presence, we're talking about our Cantar study where we're the most recognized and, and all of that. We have all that for you. So it, 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 you, don't have to, you don't have to create it. You don't have okay. to create it, Jeff. But you just have, you know, and, and you know what? I'll get with Cindy and we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll get something for you and we can give it to you. We can kind of spoon feed it to you to where you all can right. upload it. <laughs> Likes to be spoon fed. Don't yes. tell anybody that though, but yeah, <laughs> do not let this secret out. Have access Sorry for you and guys. I want all of my agents to have access to the click of a button uh, to pages that they can just okay. I want this, 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 and this. Here's my listing presentation. I gotta go, right? Because if we expect them to do 20 listing presentations a month, uh, they can't spend an hour and a half, two hours trying to put one together. No. And no, Marilyn and, I, and Colin. Yes. I'll I'll reach out to um Deanna and Becky and find okay. out if that's coming. Okay, perfect. And, Thank and you. I'm not being a negative Nelly about it. This is still no. one of the best no, things. Oh no, done. that's yeah. 
you know, I just want to fill in the gaps because I know some of my agents are going to. Great question. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. And I'd, I'd like to use you as a testimonial. So if it takes you 30 minutes or less with toolkit, when we when you get all the docs out of the collateral that you want in there, I'd like to find out how how quick you can do a listing presentation and a CMA um, with this program. And I'm, I'm, I'm like betting it's, it's going to be less than 30. Well, that but yeah, I, I was doing all of the MLS docs, uh, you know, the listing documentation that they were going to sign, all of that stuff mm -hmm. in under 30 minutes. But um, but yeah, I, I think having the integrated uh, CMA, it, it looked to me like it would take about 10 or 12 minutes. Yeah, not long. Yeah. You know, you'd, especially if you create a template that you know and love and you just go straight to that template and, and you, the, the, the longest part is to me is going to be putting in that, that subject property data, yeah, which you're going to have to do anywhere. With, with Toolkit CMA, I never even bothered to learn how to integrate the CMA into it. I did the CMA separately, mm -hmm. and my CMA always looked like every other CMA out of our MLS. The, the really real advantage for Moxie is that yours is going to stand out. It's going to be different from everybody else in the MLS. So if you're competing against two or three other agents, and unless they're a Century 21 agent that's learned how to do this, uh, you're going to have a unique and, and much better looking CMA than anybody else. That is true. That is There's so my true. testimonial. I'm there we through. go. <laughs> Are there any other questions? I, I see some stuff in chat. Let me look. There we go. No, a lot of that, that's just agreeing with what Jeff says. There's a lot of good content. Even on my side, my link to the recruiting guys team, uh, there's great content that we use in that CMA toolkit to attract agents on the unique stuff that differentiates us compared to the competition. So some of those things are pretty darn cool. We'd like to not let them fall by the wayside. So if Colin, you guys and your team are going to go back to marketing and see if they're going to kind of incorporate that, uh, that will be awesome. So we don't have to kind of reinvent the wheel. Do, do like, we have the right I'll, to I'll, do I want to have you screen right that as well. Those pages? And and put them in a in a in our brokerage presentation. That's that's a question we don't know. I don't know if that's proprietary or if that's something that we built and just incorporated into a kit. If we yeah. built it and we own it, then there you would have that yeah. right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There you go, Colin. And I mm -hmm. yeah, those yes. pages are right here as well. So yeah. Uh, the other thing, um, Jeff and Joe and, and everybody, um, I've been texting with Rhonda Woods, and she she believes that most of the presentation will flow over. But even if not, um, there is a the Century Twin listing presentation mm -hmm. already in 21 online um, that you could download and integrate as a safe page. Um, there's a listing presentation, there's a fine homes presentation that can be downloaded today. And then you could add those to the, the presentation deck for like your company, um, your company presentation that people could use and then make it their own. Excellent. Thank you. It's great to hear that the majority of that content is going to come across as well. I think that really alleviates Jeff's concern about that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, I wasn't concerned. I just wanted to know how I was going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll, we'll confirm that what's going over to uh, toolkit. That'd be great. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Man, does, does having, having been through this, do you guys feel like you're going to be better able to use this tool, that, it, that it's going to do something for you? Yes, and let me, I'm and, excited and, and, and about there's a testimonial. It. You get Fred's thumbs up. <laughs> you got two, two thumbs up from Fred. That's a good thing. Yeah, you guys realize this is just one component. You know, this is Moxie Present. You know, tomorrow we've got uh, the Impress coming along. Uh, then we've got Engage and then websites on Thursday. So uh, just one piece part of, of, of the, you know, the, the puzzle. So, um, you know, please, if you're on this call and, and come back, if you're on this call and you know folks that aren't on this call, encourage them to participate for the rest of the week. Uh, this, is, this call is specifically designed to educate you guys on the tools that are available to you with the latest and, and best technology in real estate. Couldn't have said it better. <laughs> I really do appreciate the time that you're taking to do this. Thank you very much. Well, y'all are pretty special because we, we, we can't do this with everybody um, having this, you know, the individual. So, um, but, but Joe and Jeff asked for it and we said, yeah, we think, we think y'all would get the traction that you need and it would really show you 
Um, can't wait till we get to um, the rest of the tools because they'll, they're going to they're going to blow your socks off. They really will. Excellent. All right. Here. All right. Really appreciate Marilyn well done, and Colin. Marilyn. Thank you so much. I'm telling Take you, like brother. Marilyn said, we do not do this for for all the companies. There's no way they could. They are so extremely busy. And um, Jeff and Joe asked for this. And um, so this is for you guys. So we really want you to start using that. This is a great tool and we've got more to come. So get all of your colleagues in tomorrow for this meeting. It's gonna be good. And I just so appreciate Colin and Marilyn for taking the time to do this. Absolutely, and I second that. Thank you guys for both. And uh, I'll send out one more creative email to, try to generate some enthusiasm. Uh, <laughs> For the call tomorrow morning. Yes. Tomorrow right. afternoon. So, yeah. yeah. All right, guys. I want to go ahead. Thank you for being on the call, call, everyone. It's always good to see you. Thanks. Thank Have you. Nice.